very excited because I just got my cobalt oxide. Uh, it's coming all the way from Bulgaria. Um, so it took a while to get it, but I'm excited to try this one out. Uh, before, on our last video, we were using the copper oxide, which does end up a little more on the blue side of things. Um, this one is a little more purple-ish in a way, so we're gonna go ahead and jump in and test it, and we'll see the result and how it compares to our copper oxide test. So let's dive on in. So we have our setup here. We got our cobalt oxide. I've got some glass squares little bit of water spoon and then a cup so I'm gonna go ahead and mix it um, now unlike the last video I'm gonna actually use the uh, sponge here to apply it it seemed like it was spread it a little more evenly worked a little better and always remember a little bit goes a long way it does just look just like the copper oxides so don't get them mixed up make sure you label them if you have extra you can always rehydrate it afterwards but I'm very excited to see the difference in how this looks. Might be a little much, a little less. All right, got that part. And we're just gonna add a little bit of water here. Again, we don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way. Might be a little watery. Okay, I think that's maybe about right. Just grab a paper towel. All right, we got that paper towel. Let's add our spoon. And let's spread this puppy on. Yeah, it might be a little watery as you can see. It's not really doing a great job. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more of this cobalt oxide. Usually it's even parts is what they recommend. So I'm just kind of guessing, obviously a measuring spoon would be ideal so you could mix the exact amount. But for this, just gonna mix it on up. Okay, that's looking a little better. All right, yeah, there we go. You can see when there's too much water, sometimes it acts a little funny. We're gonna do this one maybe a little heavier. And then the second one we'll do lighter. But I am gonna go ahead and let it dry. And then I'm gonna do our technique with the uh, frit so that any extra air bubbles can escape from that. Got one more here. We can do another layer. Again, this one we're gonna do a lot lighter, hopefully. <laughs> Stuff gets everywhere, it seems. All right. Make a cool effect if we apply it this way. All right. There we go. Got some darker spots, some lighter spots. Gonna get rid of some extra. And then we'll pick up a little bit more so it's a little bit lighter on this one. That way we can get a gauge between the two. Looking pretty good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and let these two dry for a minute. Once they're completely dry, we'll be able to apply the cap on top along with that frit just so the air escapes and we'll be able to see these results soon. I'm very excited to show you, so stay tuned. So now that these are both dry, I can put the cap on. You can kind of see the design that the sponge created there. This one, I went a little heavier, so you definitely have the darker spot. That's why we definitely need some of the frit to keep that from bubbling up really heavy in the center. Uh, so I've just got fine clear frit, and that's what we're gonna be adding just to the outside edge in a little pile so that the air can escape as it's bubbling and reacting.
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move these to the kiln. Then I'm gonna put the cap on just so I'm not spilling frit everywhere. So let's head over to the kiln, get these fired up, and then we'll get to see the cool result here shortly. So we're just gonna load these in. We got R1, that's our thicker uh, application. And then we've got number two here. I did sprinkle just a tiny bit of frit in the middle. Again, just a way to help those bubbles escape. So now we've got our matching pieces that are gonna fit right on top. So I'm just gonna add those in. And now we're ready to go ahead and fire these up and see what we get tomorrow. So now it's time to see our cobalt oxide that we fired. So we're just gonna raise this baby up and look at a little more purple vibe. You know, what's interesting is the spots that stayed kind of uh, black and gray. So we're gonna go ahead, make some beads, fire it up again, just to see if those dark spots will actually expand and create more texture and more bubbles. So excited to see the next step. You can see this one as well. Again, a little bit different than the uh, copper oxide. Similar, creates bubbles, but a nice color. And maybe we have to apply it a little differently. Here are our finished pieces that we just pulled out of the kiln with that cobalt oxide. You can see kind of the bubbling and everything on these pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up and turn them into beads to see if it reacts the same way that the copper does. So let's jump on in, let's cut them up and see what happens. It's time to put all these guys in the kiln and see what happens if we can get more bubbles, if it brightens it up. So let's jump over there and start it up. I got my kiln here. Uh, I'm using bullseye uh, thin fire paper and we'll see how much we need. I have lots of excess paper, so it makes it easy to fire it up. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this big piece, see what happens. Same with this long thin one. Always good to experiment, and then we'll load all these other ones here. All right, we got all these loaded up, so it's time to shut the kiln. We're gonna do it at bead temperature. So that's about 1510 that we're firing it at for six minutes, and then we'll see how it turns out afterwards. It is now time to open the kiln up. We fired it at bead temperature. I went to 1515 for six minutes. So we've got our pieces back out. And it's very interesting how it is uh, a little different than the cobalt oxide. Um, the bubbles looks like they did get bigger. Some of that black went away, but it does seem to react a little differently between the glass. Um, so we probably need to go a little thinner because it does end up very thick on here. Um, and then you can see some of our other samples where there maybe was space. There's even more space, but actually kind of a cool effect. So uh, let's take a closer look at these and see the results. So here are the results of our cobalt oxide. I did keep a sample of the copper oxide so you can see a little bit of the difference. Um, a different kind of blue slash almost purple like effect. Now this is the one of the originals before I fired it a second time. So you can see it is a little lighter after it's fired. I know it's kind of hard to tell in this video, but off video, it definitely brightens it up with a second firing at bead temperature. I will say that the cobalt oxide, it looks like is a little more sensitive when it's too thick. You do end up with some potential black spots. Um, I did also get some spaces, so it did split up, as you can really see here, um, where it, I don't know if there's too much liquid or water or whatnot, but it's just interesting how this cobalt reacts differently 
and is different on the glass versus the copper. And you can see it did brighten it up. It does still make the bubbles bigger with the second firing. Still a really cool effect. I'm gonna play around with this more on some shorts here on YouTube that I'll post um, as I experiment further. But for now, check it out. This is a really cool material that you can get. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe. Definitely check out our other videos. And we got new ones coming to you every single week. So stay tuned. If you ever have an experiment or some other video you'd like to see, definitely let us know. I'm always happy to post more and share more because fusing is awesome. And I'd love your feedback. So thanks so much for tuning in. And we'll see you next time uh, on our next video. Mm -hmm.